YouTube. It's your boy TVK. Man, it's 30 days of TVK and I've got another video for you. This time it's going to be another installment of Ask TVK where you can ask me whatever you want and I will bring you the information to you straight here to your eyeballs and your eardrums. Today's question comes from Citric Brave and they ask, how has your practice routine changed and what would you recommend to the younger, less skilled generation of committed players? What are some of the most important things to remember? That's a great question. And you know what, as I've gotten older, my practice has changed drastically. I am much more goal-oriented and efficient when I practice. So if you saw my vlog on how to practice like a pro, you'll know that I do a practice log now. And that really helps me target exactly what I need to do and gives me a specific amount of time and a goal to get it done. Because if you sit down with your instrument and just practice with no goal in mind, you're not gonna go as far than if you have specific target targets that you wanna attack. So that developed before I did it. Before I used to just play through my pieces over and over and over and over again. But as I've gotten older, I've actually stopped doing that and started practicing the stuff that I can't play very well. Because practicing the stuff you can't play is gonna be, is gonna be what makes you better. Don't practice the stuff you can play uh, don't practice it as often because you're just going to be wasting time. I actually do a lot more scales now than I used to when I was younger because I hated scales. And I think scales are probably the most important thing to help you improve. Or if you've taken a break, like I do, it'll help you get back in shape faster than anything else. The way you do your scales is super important, especially for younger students too. What I really recommend is that you do slurs of 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24 notes per bow at 60 beats per minute. Really work up with a metronome like that. So when you wanna keep scales exciting though, because it can get very boring, you wanna change up the, to different bowings. Let's take a group of four. You can do different bowings like down, up, up, down, up, up. You can do down, up, up, up. You can do up, down, down, down. That's actually a fun one that really makes you work your brain and really control your bow. You can also do different permutations of the scales in a way where you have 12 notes per bow, but you break those 12 notes into different pieces, like two, four, and six, like this. You can do that, and then I do different per permutations of that. 264, 426, 462, 624, and 642. So that's scales. The next thing that's really important is recording yourself, even when you're young. Record yourself, bring the practice recording to your teacher, and especially of parts that you're having a lot of trouble with, because then your teacher can sit down with you, and you can listen to you, and they can listen to you, and they can show you why it doesn't sound good, and give you ways and solutions. So you can go back, record yourself while you're by yourself, and remember what your teacher told you about. Okay, when I sound like this, that means I'm pressing too hard, let me change that. That helps to become your own teacher, and I wish I had done that when I was younger. And here's the thing, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of etudes. And your teacher may assign you etudes, so do them. But now, when, now that I'm older, I don't do etudes anymore. I actually treat my music like etudes, especially the hard ones and I use them as, as, as ways to really dissect the music, understand the technical things that are really difficult, and work the kinks out from a very, very micro, microscope level of focus. And the final thing I do, and this kind of leads into the last one about breaking things down to a microscopic level, is practicing slowly. Practicing so slowly, practicing stupid slowly to where you feel kind of dumb. <laughs> That's the thing, you gotta practice stupid slowly, okay? And this is what I mean. Let's take the beginning of the Walton Viola Concerto. One, two, three, four, five. really 
so the reason why you want to practice slowly is because it gives you so much time. And I'm not talking about slowly, I'm talking about slowly, like molasses. Because the longer time you have to prepare for upcoming music, the better it will be. And it will give you more time to plan. Because music is all planning. When you get to a higher level of playing, you're going to be planning your phrasing out. I'm actually going to be doing a video on that very soon, and you'll see why. But when you change the phrasing, you need to plan out the amount of bow that you're going to use so that your phrasing starts somewhere and it goes somewhere. If you have the same sounding music throughout, there's no contrast, there's no incline, there's no wind, there's no sweep, there's no slope, there's no valley, there are no peaks. And that's what you need to make music sound interesting. And when you play slowly, it helps you view the mountain from a far away distance and really take, drink in what needs to happen. How do I surmount that colossal mound of earth? That's what slow practice does. It gives you so much time. And when you practice slowly, you solidify correct habits the first time so that you no longer later on in your practicing or later on in learning the piece, you no longer have to unlearn bad habits because that will kill you every single time. It's much easier to form good habits than to destroy bad habits. So. That's why you must practice slowly. So, did that help you out? I hope that answered your question. And if you got some value out of this, please smash that like button. It helps me out so much. And if you have some questions that you want me to answer here, make sure you comment below. You can tweet at me. You can shoot me a DM on Instagram. You can shoot me a message on Facebook. No matter where it is, where it lives, I've been compiling them on my computer and I will get back to you with these questions. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. You guys always make my day. I love seeing you in the comments. I'll see you down there. And until then, don't forget to, your undergraduate studies are your most formative years. Like everything you've done before undergrad really doesn't matter. The undergrad is where you begin your journey. It's where you start your scales, where you get all of your technique from. So I think what is most important is the teacher you're studying with and then comes the location. Because honestly, if you have a small,